Hi everyone and welcome to this Ecommission Deconstructed video. Today we're gonna talk about an algorithm called Index Layer Calculation. This algorithm can calculate four different indices that you see here on this slide, namely the NDVI, which stands for Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, the NDWI, Normalized Difference Water Index, and the SI, Normalized Difference Soil Index in this case, and the NBR, which stands for Normalized Burned Ratio. And I'm gonna have a slide for each of these indices, how they're calculated and why you should use them. And afterwards, we're gonna have a look at eCognition, how you can use or calculate those and how it looks like in a project. I simply depicted here a few advantages that came to my mind. First one is when you have an index, it helps you to display and highlight properties suitable for particular applications. The NDVI, for example, if you're looking for vegetation, the NDWI if you're looking for water. So specified properties for particular applications. Next one is topography independent. What I mean by that is fairly difficult to explain, but I try. So what I mean by that is if you, for example, have a forest and half of the forest is covered by shadow and the other half is not, you're gonna have different absolute values in the near infrared or in the red. Uh, so different values of reflectance because you simply get less reflectance in shadow areas, right? That makes sense. So if you're calculating, for example, the NDVI, you have two input layers with absolute values, but you're calculating a ratio with a relative measure, and then that's comparable. So the ratio is the same, or the relative measure of the NDVI is the same in shadow areas and in no shadow areas, and that's a huge advantage. Next point, more transferable, comparable. Here I listed three points that came to my mind, sensor independent, spatially independent, and data independent. What I mean by sensor independent is that if you have different sensors that have the same bands, band width, that are needed to calculate indices, they are comparable, right? So if you, for example, calculate the NDVI of a Landsat image and one of Sentinel-2, this value is gonna be comparable. And also if you use a threshold for the NDVI, that's gonna be more transferable than a fixed threshold in the red band, for example. Um, spatially independent, what I mean by that is that the pixel size doesn't matter. Um, the value is still comparable. So it doesn't matter if you have 10 centimeter pixels or 10 meters. If you calculate the NDVI, the values are comparable in these regions, right? So UAV data that you collected, calculate the NDVI, compare it to a satellite image. That's perfectly fine. Last one, data independent. It doesn't depend on the bit depth that you have. It always gonna be the same range, right? NDVI is gonna result, for example, in a range of minus one and plus one. And it doesn't matter if you have 8-bit input data, 16-bit or 32-bit. Um, and that also makes it more comparable in between different sensors that you might have. Let's have a look at each single index layer and the calculation in the background that's done in the cognition. First one, NDVI for vegetation. And it's a combination of the near infrared and the red. You see the formula here on the slide. The question is now, why are we using near and red to calculate the NDVI? The simple answer is that the spectral signature of vegetation is very unique. So you have very low reflectance in red and very high reflectance in near in healthy vegetation. And that leads to high values in the NDVI for healthy vegetation and lower values for non-healthy vegetation and even lower values around 0, 0 0.2 or even negative values for non-vegetation. NDWI for water, the formula looks different. Green and near are used to calculate the NDWI. And here you also see the spectral signature, which actually makes clear why we use these two bands for this index. So you see a higher reflectance in green and no reflectance in near because water absorbs all near infrared waves, right? So it, it's usually black and that gives you nice values to classify water. I'm gonna have a look at that in a second. Next one, NDSI, Normalized Difference Soil Index, which is nice to discriminate soil from other land covers. And here we're using red and the blue band. That's the spectral signature usually of soil. So low reflectance 
in blue, higher reflectance in red, and if that difference is very high, you're probably gonna have soil, right? And that's the formula behind the NDSI. Last but not least, NBR, which stands for normalized burn ratio. And here you see the formula. We use near infrared as well as short wave infrared. So you need to have both of these layers to be able to calculate the NBR. And the reason why we're using near and sphere is this one here. So that is the spectral signature of a burnt area. And usually also you have high differences between near and short wave infrared. And you're gonna see in the result, it's gonna give you very nice hotspots where you find burnt area. Okay, now before we go into recognition, simply an overview. So we have index layer calculation. We can calculate the NDVI, NDWI, NDSI, and the NBR. And within the cognition, it's gonna create a new raster layer that you also can export and use in other products or that might already be your product. Um, so no need to use third-party software to calculate the NDVI. You simply can do it in eCognition. All right, let's jump into eCognition and see how it works. Here's the project. I already loaded a Sentinel-2 image. I reduced it to five bands, blue, green, red, near and shortwave infrared. And uh, the acquisition date is beginning of this year. And we nicely have everything that we want here. So we have burnt areas that you see down here. We have water, we have vegetation, we have soil. That's why I've chosen this subset to show you how it looks like and how it works. Right, let's have a look at the rule set. So first one, NDVI. Here I already have a process with the algorithm, index layer calculation, and then you simply leave everything default. You can choose here the index that you want to calculate. And here you see the four indexes that I've explained previously. In this case, we want to calculate the NDVI. Then it's going to ask me which is your red band, which is your near infrared. And I select those. Those two are needed to calculate the NDVI. Uh, a name for the output layer by default is NDVI. You can change that. And you also see when I change it to NDWI, it's gonna change the settings, the output layer name, and also the layers that are used to calculate. Then you can also define the bit depth and simply hit execute. And let's wait a few seconds and see how the result looks like. So you see also in the view settings here that we now have a new raster layer, right? So we calculate a new raster layer. It is there, you can export it, use it. And now I'm gonna display the NDVI at the bottom pane and on top you see the, the RGB image. And in red you have very high values of NDVI which corresponds to vegetation. And I'm gonna zoom here into this popular area that most of you probably know. And I found it quite interesting that at the coastline you have these peaks of vegetation that are actually not visible in the RGB image, but there is vegetation. That's why we see the red colors in the NDVI here. So high values indicate vegetation. You also see a stadium where football was played a few years ago and still is probably. Um, let's go to a agricultural area where you instantly see which field has crops on it and which doesn't. And actually also a nice side effect is that you nicely see also the water surfaces because they have very low NDVI values usually. Okay, looks good. Let's go to the next one, the NDWI. So we're looking at water and water index. I simply change the index here to NDWI. Now I have to define the green layer and the near. Output is called NDWI, execute this one, and that's gonna again create a new layer for me in my project and name it as I've defined it. NDWI is the default name for NDWI. Let's display this one at the bottom pane and again swipe it. So what you see here, the white values are non-water areas and red and black means it's very likely to be water. And I think that's a nice example here. You have a lot of ponds that are very difficult to see in the RGB image. 
But if you check the NDWI, bam, you see all these ponds there that in the RGB look green, uh, blue. So it's difficult to spot, but after the calculation of the NDWI, it's easy to see them and also makes it easier to classify. So that was a surprise to me actually how many water surfaces we actually have in this area. Uh, very small lakes and ponds that I didn't see at the beginning before calculating the NDWI. All right, the next one is the NDSI. So for soil, again, we're gonna use here different bands. The output name is different, but the rest stays default. So we're gonna calculate a new layer called NDSI for soil. Let's display it again on the bottom pane. And now white actually represents soil. So very bright and also red areas indicate that we have a certain fraction of soil. Here nicely see the roads, right? Gravel roads, probably. And also in agricultural areas, you nicely see the fields without crops, okay? And the shoreline also nicely depicts that you have sand probably here, so non-vegetated areas. And I also want to show you a different example up here where we have a, a small city. And usually soil and urban areas are difficult to discriminate. But in this case, if you look at the NDSI, you see that the buildings have very low values and soil has high values, right? So that might be also a good layer to discriminate urban areas and non-urban areas or non-vegetated soil areas. Now the next one, NBR, normalized burn ratio. Here you have to use the near infrared and the short wave infrared. So if you have those layers available, you can calculate it and map burned area. Let's also display that one on the bottom pane and see how the result looks like. I have small spots, I could remove those. I'm actually looking for the big fires here. So you see in the RGB that that might be a fire, but also surroundings look like burned area. But in the NBR, it, it becomes visible, really visible what is burned area. Also this spot here could also be soil, but this combination reveals burned areas nicely. So that would be a good start to start classifying burned areas, calculating the, the NBR. And actually as a last step, I simply want to show you a classification that I did solely based on these four index layers, so I didn't use anything else. I used some multi-threshold segmentation algorithms to classify different classes. You see the class hierarchy on the right-hand side. So burned area, soil, urban vegetation into different classes based on the NDVI value and water. And that was done within a few seconds and the result looks actually pretty promising. There's still some false positives but you could easily remove them using object-based image analysis methodology that eCognition is using. So addressing the shape, the size of image objects to remove those from classifications and also reshape the outlines and the object itself. And then you can export your results and you're good to go. All right, so thank you very much for watching this eCognition Deconstructed video. We talked about index layer calculation for predefined index layers. You can calculate every single index that you want. You would need to use another algorithm called layer arithmetics. But in this case, for predefined, very easy to use. Select the layers, execute it, and then you have your index as a Russell layer in your project. All right, thank you very much. See you next time.